Another challenge for the Green Hornet. His aide, Cato, and their rolling arsenal, the Black Beauty. On police records, a wanted criminal, the Green Hornet is really Britt Reed, owner publisher of the Daily Sentinel. His dual identity, known only to his secretary and to the district attorney. And now, to protect the rights and lives of decent citizens, rides the Green Hornet. Fifty percent of your take from Professor Wiley's subliminal motivation machine. What on earth are you I don't talking have about? time for charades, Eden. My dear man, I operate a health club, that's all. A health club that caters to... Find some... a quiet alley where you can park. Mr. Eden's memory needs a little jogging. Oh, now, look here. You wouldn't dare. Oh, wouldn't I? I'm not afraid of you. Did anybody ever tell you what a bad liar you are, Eden? All right. All right, let's say I do have this little sideline you mentioned. Sideline? Fifty percent, that's a lot. It's exactly half. Yes, I know. Well, I need time to think it over. All right. You have 30 seconds. Well, I guess I'm in no position to turn it down. No, you're not. And I'd be a fool to refuse even if I could. You, your car, your weapons, your equipment. You could contribute a good deal to a partnership. A modest amount. Like, um, tomorrow night, for instance. What about tomorrow night? The president of the Century Bank is a patron of the Vale of Eden. And he's been, shall we say, programmed to leave the time lock on the bank's vault turned off. Interested? Where and what time shall I meet you? In an alley behind the bank at exactly nine o'clock.
vain. Oh, Mr. Eve. You don't know how happy I am that you called me and asked me to come in for a treatment today. It's almost as if you knew how confused and upset I was. I had the most disturbing experience yesterday, a friend of mine. A Mr. Reed accused me of, of stealing a necklace worth a quarter of a million dollars. How absurd. Yes, that's what I told him. I said, if this Mr. Oliver, well, if he'd lost the necklace that valuable, he certainly would have reported to the police, wouldn't he? Of course he would. But he didn't. I know it's ridiculous, but I have this feeling that I wasn't home all day yesterday as I thought I was. Now I have a feeling... We'll talk about all that later, but in the meantime, we have a special treatment, all prepared just for you. A special treatment? Yes. I can guarantee you, Miss Vane, that before this day is over, you won't have a care in the world. Not a care in the world. Oh, thank you, Mr. Reed. <laughs> thank you. Elga, Miss Vane is waiting. Thank you, Mr. Eaton. This will do the job. Dorothy, my dear, there's enough nitroglycerin in here to blow up the Green Hornet, his car, his chauffeur, and Miss Bain 20 times over. check the layout before Eden shows up. He agreed awfully fast to the Green Hornet muscling in. This could be a setup. Here's your handbag, my dear. Thank you. You look ever so much better. Oh, I am a thousand percent better. As a matter of fact, I can't even remember what it was that was bothering me. Excellent. Miss Bain, I took the liberty of calling a taxi for you. Oh, how thoughtful you are. Good night, dear Mr. Eden. Better check your gas mask. Gas mask A-OK. -okay. Somebody's coming. Eden? Can't tell. Peter Eden sent me. I have a message for you. May I get in? Please. What's the message? He said to tell you tonight's job is off. Is that all? Well, why did he send you? Well, I... I don't know. Oh, come on, he must have said something. Yes, I guess he did. You guess? I mean, yes. What? I don't know. He... No, please, you're confusing me. Where did you see Eden? At the Vale of Eden. I think. I went there for a treatment. And... I'm so confused. Here, let me... No! Let anyone handle that. Who said, Eden? Yes, no. No, I don't know. It was a voice. Ah, no! We'll take Vanessa home. Then we'll pay Eden a visit.
gentlemen, I've just been handed a bulletin. A tremendous explosion of unknown origin rocked this city's financial district at 9 o'clock this evening. The blast occurred in an alley behind the Century Bank. Police have not yet determined whether anybody was injured in the explosion. However... Dorothy, my dear, I thought you'd left for the night. I just dropped by to dissolve our partnership, Eden. Get him up to the tangerine room right away. is all set. Nice music. Beethoven? Mm-hmm. I think Ian would like that. So do I. This is a friend of yours, Mr. Eden. A friend in whom you can confide and tell your innermost secrets. Time's up, Eden. Oh, hi, fellas. Hi, friend. Well, how did it go tonight? How did what go tonight? The job, tonight. Aren't the boys back yet? Not yet. Ah, oh, well, it's a long way back from the racetrack. The racetrack? Yeah. What's the matter? You've forgotten we're knocking over the Riverview harness track tonight. Oh, yes. Yes, we had forgotten. You better stick to the back alleys. That will cost us time. Can't help it. We don't want to take the chance of being recognized. The regulars are off tonight. I'll have to see some identification. Sure. You know, 
great relief after the money's safely tucked away for the night. that gate. to short it out. Keep pressing the button. Nothing we can do here. Yep. Tell Thompson I want that on page one. Imagine page one. I rode with the Green Hornet. <laughs> <laughs> 
by Vanessa Vane, as told to Mike Axford. This could win me a Pulitzer Prize. Oh, it's so thrilling. But I don't get it. You don't get what, Mike? Well, take this guy Eden, for example. When the police raided his health club and woke him up, the guy immediately fell on his knees and begged the cops to let him confess everything. He even told them where they could find the Catherine necklace. He said that's what the Green Hornet said he should do. Then, instead of holding Miss Vane, kidnapping her or something, the Green Hornet drove her home as polite as pie. Oh, but I have a theory about that. And what is your theory, Miss Vane? Never mind, you don't laugh. Let's hear it, Vanessa. Well, it isn't really a theory. It's more like a feeling. Yeah. That the Green Hornet is secretly on the side of law and order. The Green Hornet, the devil incarnate on the side of law and order. You must still be in a state of shock, Miss Vane. Well, now, wait a minute, Mike. The Green Hornet did get Peter Eden. A case of thieves fallen out, that's all. The Green Hornet had nothing in mind but hijacking the racetrack loot from Eden. Uh, perhaps. But I'm interested in your theory. Let's discuss it further at lunch, shall we? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> but, Mr. Reed, this is your day to have lunch at the commissary and mingle with the employees. I'll mingle tomorrow, shall we? Casey, you don't suppose it's possible, do you? What's that, Mike? That the Green Hornet isn't all bad. No, it's not possible, Mike. The Green Hornet is a 14-carat stinker. <laughs> <laughs>